All right. So now I want to take issue with the Me Too and the Time's Up movement. I know that I might be angering a few of you, but you're going to have to hear me out a little bit. Here's another weekend now. We're going to be headed into another time of Women's March. Hollywood, of course, gathered again. We've got uh, Eva Longoria and Scarlett Johansson and Olivia Mum, Natalie Portman, of course, different folks that are gathering. And I, I want to really take issue with a few of these things because the movement really, at this point, is just is just doomed to fail. And let, let me go through some issues and what we're, what, what we're having a problem with here. Number one, too little, too late, right? So this, this began really like, let's go back to Rose McGowan, for instance. She is the one that came out against Harvey Weinstein way back. She, she, she's famous for being one of the actresses that was in Scream. And basically, she took the payoff. She took the 100 grand payoff from Harvey. And the casting couch type of legacy was just, again, swept under the carpet. Well, now they come out in 2018, and they're all heroes because they're all coming forward. Um, you have the hypocrisy of someone like Ashley Judd, who becomes famous, but then wants to talk about being sexually harassed. But again, where was she during all this time? Of course, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, uh, obviously were part of the Harvey Weinstein cover-up. They've kind of backpedal off of that, trying to say, back and forth about what they knew, what they didn't know. And, of course, you know, Kevin Smith is connected to that whole Miramax scene. And every other thing about Kevin Smith's films, especially early on, was, was misogynistic and sexist. So how hypocritical are these people? And then, of course, you get to, you know, the Kevin Spacey and Brian Singers, where it's even in the gay community. They're, they're, they're abusing little boys. They're going after, um, you know, kids. And, and you know, it, it's, just, it's just rampant all through Hollywood. So what are we supposed to believe now? Who's, who, who's policing who now? Hollywood, we're supposed to believe now they're policing themselves. Now these women are leading the movement now where they're, they're going to actually, what, name names? What, what have they named names? We had a Golden Globes. Are we supposed to believe that all of the after parties, all of the, the countless uh, getting togethers of folks, all that was above board? Nothing was inappropriate. Nothing's been done. You know, they created this culture of the casting couch that's been, you know, made fun of and joked about for years. I mean, Kevin Spacey's joke is, is the famous Family Guy skit that's now gone viral on the Internet with, the, you know, the little naked baby running out of escape from Kevin Spacey's basement. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's been joked about. Now we're supposed to believe the Me Too movement, Time's Up, is going to make a difference, right? Well, it's still too generic. There's still no specifics. You know, we, we don't even understand terminology. You've got Natalie Portman out there. You have the, these folks out there, and, and they, they still don't even understand what we're talking about. Are we talking about abuse? Are we talking about men or pigs? What, what are we actually saying? I mean, Natalie Portman rambles on and on and on about this uh, fan letter that she was this nasty, filthy fan mail. When she was this little girl, this little 12-year-old, 13-year-old girl, she had a role in a movie called The Professional. And she re receives this disgusting rape fantasy letter from some pig. Okay. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure what she wants me to do there. I mean, she's, she's a little upset at some of the reviewers talking about her body. She's upset that that's how, you know, she wants to try to express herself as being, what, prudish now? Is, is that what she's going to be? I mean, sex is in every other film, it seems like, out of Hollywood. I mean, we have to deliberately interject sexual innuendo in just about everything. So what are we supposed to do here? Time's up for what? They're all wearing black. They're trying to show unity, and yet they don't even make sense. Olivia Munn, in this speech, talks about misogyny. Misogyny. In this 2016 documentary, it's called Audrey and Daisy. It's about two teenage victims of abuse and bullying. Well, okay. Are we talking about misogyny or are we talking about abuse and bullying? Because... You know, a misogyny has to do with hatred and, and belittlement of women and that kind of thing. But are we talking about actual rape, sexual assault? Are we talking about bullying? What are we actually talking about? What, what, what crimes are we actually talking about? So, yes, we need to empower women. But when's the last time someone said, well, you know, I'm actually pro-rape? We, we demonized Bill Cosby of all. Bill Cosby, this American icon of family, when it found out that he's drugging women and taking advantage of them, the whole society and culture turned on this guy. String him up. We all we all rallied around. Fine, let's let's do justice. But by not giving names and information along the way, what are we accomplishing? Pat, another pat yourself on the back. Give yourself another little little bow to pin on your on your dress. Wear black and feel good about yourself. Because what what are we doing here? You know, you're not accomplishing anything. You've made sex this this inconsequential thing where there's allegedly no accountability and no consequences. Well, that's just not true. So why am I bringing this up? Because 
as Christians, we need to make sure that we're standing on what sex actually means, right? We've gotten away from biblical truths. We've gotten away from sex is pure, sex is holy, something is a gift from God. I mean, that's the whole essence of Genesis, right? Where Adam and Eve come together, they are naked, and then they sin, and they see themselves differently, and they have to be clothed. And the whole point of sex, and it was reaffirmed with Jesus in Mark chapter 6, where he's talking about a man leaves a woman, and they become one flesh. It's this very holy and pure thing. If that's the case, then it should be easy for us to point out when that's being abused. You know, when there are perverts, when there's sexual harassment. You know, why is it that Hollywood is being held to any different standards than all of us have been for years working in corporate America? You know, we're not allowed to just run around and, and grab women or expose ourselves. And you know what? Call the cops. Name names. This is just nonsense. It's, just, it's spiraling into just another ho a Hollywood look at me fest instead of actually doing anything for people that actually are victims. Sexual assault has been part of my family since I was a child. It's ran through a couple of my, my, my family, um, even one of my dear, dear, uh, close, close family members on more than one occasion. And that's what we need to deal with. We need to deal with who are these assailants? You know, what are the victims? Let's look at the evidence and let's deal with it appropriately. No more slaps on the, slaps on the wrist and move on. Hollywood is not exempt and I'm all behind that part of the movement. But if we're just going to just randomly have rallies and just throw out, you know, vague anecdotal talking points to just shame all men, well, shame on you. Because not all men are evil. Not all men are doing these things. So, you know, I encourage them to exercise their free speech. I want to see that. That's great. Time's up. Me too. But I want to also see some action. I want to see something of uh, substance. I want to see evidence in cases. I want to see you name names. And I want to see something happen. And as you... As my brothers and sisters in the Lord, I, I hope that you'll join me in prayer and find ways that we can actually help the victims when we identify them. Um, coming up next on my show, I want to make sure that we're going to talk about uh, Beauty for Ashes. It's a group that deals with individuals that are struggling with some of these topics and drug abuse as well. And it, it, this, is, this is what we need to do, wrap our arms around people, find ways to support them, show them the right way in the Lord, show them what Jesus can do for them, how to actually properly heal, and, and move forward united. So we're going to continue. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Stay with us. We're going to have a quick commercial break. We'll come right back.